Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Becky Robinson. I'm the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence, and I'm so glad that you are choosing to invest part of your day with me. As everyone comes in, I hope you'll take a moment to let us know in the chat where you are calling in from today. I am in my office in Lambertville, Michigan, and it's an absolutely gorgeous day outside, although I have spent most of my day, besides a short walk with my dog this morning, in the office. So I am looking forward to some more time outside. So I noticed that a few more people have come in since I mentioned this, but we do want the chat to be a very engaging place today where we can uh, learn and grow with you. So please take a moment to find the chat, use the drop down menu to select everyone and let us know where you are calling in from today. And we are gonna get started with our content in just a few moments. Um, but we're really thrilled that you've chosen to join us for today's webinar. Welcome, Andrea in Colorado Springs. Thank you. Aubrey, where are you today? I am in Toledo, Ohio, not far from you. And I am so excited about the beautiful weather. We've had, I feel like, such a long winter. <laughs> so I'm ready to get outside for sure. Awesome. Well, I do see a few familiar names and a few new names, but welcome in uh, DC and Atlanta. Oh, the other Becky's here. How awesome is that? Uh, <laughs> welcome uh, in Tampa, in Jacksonville, in South Africa, an international audience already. So I want to let you know about a few things that we are up to uh, with this webinar today. We are scheduled for an hour. Uh, I'm not sure that the content will take an hour. If you have a lot of questions, we can stay for an hour. Um, but I'm excited to share some new insights and new ideas, even some that that I was considering this morning. So um, let's see what else. We will take some Q&A later in today's event. We do want to engage with you through some polls in a moment. Uh, quick note, Aubrey Pastorek is my esteemed colleague today. Uh, we have been working together for six years, and um, so I'm thrilled that she can support me on the webinar. And I'm going to let her introduce me, and then we're going to dive into today's content. Yeah, thanks, Becky. I was thinking before this, I was like, how long have we worked together? Even though it was just, it was just we just passed six years, but I couldn't remember. But I'm so excited to get to introduce you today. So many of you probably already know Becky is the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence. And in our 11 years of business, she has guided us to launch more than 200 books, which is super exciting. She's also the author of Reach, which I have right here. I have my copy and Reach just turned one this month. So that's super exciting. Um, Becky is an avid runner and in her free time, she enjoys spending her quality time with her, her lovely family. So Becky, I'm going to hand it back over to you and I'll be back at the end, possibly for Q&A. Perfect. Thank you so much, Aubrey. All right. So we do want to get to know a little bit about all of you today. And I, I realized that I added a second poll, but I didn't actually add it in Zoom. So I'll just ask the question of you. And if you want to type in the chat, I'm curious about your previous exposure to me and my work. Um, so I'm wondering, have you read my book already? Have you listened to my podcast? Have you been on my email list or have you met me personally? Or is the topic of my book reach brand new to you? So I wanna watch the chat, especially if the work is brand new to you, uh, would you tell me that? And uh, it looks like, thank you. Yeah, but, uh, I've got a lot of friends on the call, so it's, it's, it's good to see you. Um, the good news is I'm not gonna just do a, a recap of all the content that I shared last year. I have some new things to talk to you about today. So it looks like most of you have some previous exposure to my work and are not new. So that is helpful as we begin the day. Uh, the other thing that I wanna do also is to find out um, as it relates to um, reach, which of these topics is most present for you today? I realize that you may want to say these are both important to me, but for today, which of these is most important for you? So in my book, I define reach as expanding audience plus lasting impact. And so today I want to dive in a bit more to both of these topics, but I'm curious which one is most critical. And I'm going to give you just a few more moments to answer the poll. Which of these is most present for you today? And this is pretty interesting and may uh, guide where I spend my time. 
So thank you to those of you who have taken the time to answer the poll. I will show you these results. It looks like for two thirds of you, what is most present for you today is expanding your audience. And about a third of you say that what is important for you today is creating lasting impact. And I just wanna own that it's kind of an impossible question because we want both, right? We both want to reach more people and we want to have a lasting impact. So asking you to choose is probably a little bit problematic, but I think at times we might experience kind of this this push and pull where, you know, creating lasting impact is hard um, and it takes a long time. Um, and we may at first like stay focused on the topic of expanding audience. So I will share a few slides today. Uh, my friend Becky said she's listening and working while she, while we're on this webinar. So if you can't see the slides, no worries. In the event that the slides would be valuable to you, we can share them later as a PDF. We are also recording right now. And so we can uh, get the recording to you as well in case you want to revisit any of these concepts. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to take a look at a couple of things as we dive into today's topic. Um, the overall title today, how to uh, achieve the greatest possible influence for your message book or cause. All right, so I wanna revisit for a moment the definition of reach as outlined in my book, Reach is Expanding Audience Plus Lasting Impact. And this is a little bit differently than, you know, some people may define reach. Some people may define reach purely by numbers of, you know, how many people is this post going to reach when I put it on Instagram or LinkedIn. And and while those metrics can be helpful in terms of grounding ourselves with the size of the audience that's possible for us, I feel like it falls a bit short because um, really what matters more is not, you know, in any given moment, how much content, uh, how many people is my content able to reach or how many impressions does my content have, but honestly, like, how much impact can the content have, who will be changed by it or challenged by it or take action on it. Um, so above all today, I wanna be asking and answering two questions. The first question is, how does an audience grow? What does it take to grow an audience online for your work? And the second question I wanna answer is, where does lasting impact come from? And so, as we get started, for those of you who have read the book, I want to remind us all of the four commitments that I talk about in the book. Uh, the four commitments are value, consistency, generosity, and longevity. And so what I want to do today that I didn't do in the book and I haven't really done in any content since the book is to talk about how these four commitments specifically map to those two parts of the REACH uh, definition. So how do the four commitments map to growing an audience? How do the four commitments map to having lasting impacts? And then I also want to talk about some new considerations or new learning that I've had over the past year about what it takes to grow an audience and what it takes to have lasting impact. So the other thing I want to say, and this actually just came to me this morning as I was driving my dropping my daughter off at school. Um, you may have heard me say before, if you've heard me talk about the book, that the original book didn't have that reach definition as, as it was in the final book. The first draft of the book also didn't call these the four commitments. It, instead, in my first draft of the book, I called these the four factors. And my editor, Neil Mallett, I'll give him a shout out, had said to me, you know, that word factors is kind of like, you know, not very snappy, we need something else. And so eventually we landed on four commitments. But what I was thinking about this morning is yes, they are commitments and yet there is something that precedes a commitment and that is choice. So as it relates to building an audience and having lasting impact, we face choices every single day. And so if you can think about now, as you think about the four commitments, also, that it's a choice. Um, I think that might be a, a way of um, giving yourself energy and momentum to maintain these commitments. So I'm gonna stop sharing my slides and we're gonna talk for a little bit about uh, growing an audience and some learning about what it takes to build an audience over time. And I wanna say, first of all, that 
all four of the commitments are important if you want to grow an audience. So first, you have to choose to show up with value. You need to do it consistently. You need to do it generously. And you need to do it over the long term. Um, one of the new learnings that I've had over the last year, though, about value is in many instances, I have talked about value from a content perspective and that the that content is the container for the value that we bring in the world. That's an exact quote from the book. Uh, what I've been thinking about over the last year is that content, that value is not only about the content that we're creating and sharing, but uh, value is also about the connections that we're making. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, and I'm curious in the chat if you wanna tell me what you think. I wanna say actually that there's more value in connections than there is in content. I'm gonna just like, I'm pausing on purpose. There is more value in the connections than we're making than in the content that we're sharing. And the, you know, I think that's something that I missed when I wrote the book. Thank you. I see that Dick agrees and Lynn agrees and Bo agrees. Um, you know, content is something. And quite often we're gonna seek out a thought leader or a book or a cause because the content is something that resonates with us. But apart from a relationship with a person that we're connecting with, that content may fall short or we may forget about it and that impact will be missing. So I think one thing about growing an audience is to remember that an audience is comprised of people. So it, in the past, you know, when people would talk about online presence, the big word was platform. And I honestly, I hated the idea of platform because platform is this image of I'm on a stage, I'm above you, I'm disconnected from you. Like a platform is something I'm developing. Platform eliminates people. So I like to think more in terms of community. And so when we think about growing an audience, remember that the audience is, a, is comprised of individual people. And the more we can make a, a true connection with someone, whether it's through an email or whether it's through response to a post or whether it's through a face-to-face -face call, that audience will be more meaningful and we'll have the possibility of expanding more. Uh, than if we really think about an audience as this anonymous group that we're, uh, uh, you know, sharing content to. All right. So um, as we think about how to grow an audience, that value piece of content and connection is critical. Uh, the consistency piece is critical. Um, I want to share a few case studies of growing audience um, so that uh, I can give you some new insights that are not in the book. So the first one that I want to think about with you, and I'm going to uh, bring up actually an open Instagram window that I have. Um, I want to talk about a thought leader that you have probably heard me promote if you've been around a while. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at right now is Mark Miller's Instagram account. And I want to uh, talk a little bit about growing audience because uh, this Instagram account has grown in an incredibly big way since January. A little bit of context about Mark Miller. Mark has been writing books uh, for more than a decade. Uh, his 11th book came out this March. And leading up to the launch of his 11th book, uh, his Instagram account was around 17, 1800 followers back in January. And if you're looking at my screen, you will see that right now this Instagram account has 17 and a half thousand followers. And so for those of you who came to, to, to today's call and you said, hey, I'm really interested in this idea of how do you grow an audience, I want to give you a few lessons and takeaways uh, from the growth of this Instagram account over the last three months. So a few things. Uh, my colleague, Wendy Hahn, is someone who supports Mark with this account. So I want to give a shout out to her. Uh, but Wendy had some learning around a few things related to how to get an Instagram account to grow more frequently, uh, grow more quickly. And one of them was to increase the frequency of posting. So earlier this year, Wendy went from uh, a, a lower cadence of posting to posting, you know, with and for Mark uh, every single day. Um, and so frequency in terms of showing up in online spaces can help you grow your audience faster. So if you want to grow your audience faster, consider, can I increase the frequency with which I'm posting, which will expand my content to more people and help me grow my account faster. So now I'm not going to say that frequency is completely responsible for the growth of 10x of this Instagram account in three months. So there are a few other tactics that we tried. Um, and one of them was engagement. And 
And so every single time Wendy would be working on Mark's account, she would also make sure that she was liking and commenting on other people's posts when new posts came out from Mark so that that engagement uh, and presence is there. So if you have any questions along the way, by the way, about the case studies that I'm sharing, uh, uh, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, and it's sorry, I'm trying to like manage the chat and the and the case study at the same time. So the lesson here uh, from Mark is this lesson of frequency. Um, I would also say, along with the lesson of frequency, sometimes a way to grow an audience faster is to pour money uh, at the issue. So um, what we have seen is that when people invest in paid social, quite often that can help grow their audience faster. And in the case of this Instagram account, we did have a paid campaign along with Mark's new book coming out that we think contributed to the growth of this account. Okay, so frequency and paid social are two ways to grow an audience faster. I want to take a look at another case study. Um, and I have this open here. So this is our client, Carrie Anderson. And this is a, a video of hers that went out last month that uh, went viral in its own way. And so I wanna reflect on why that might be. And there are two factors uh, to help grow audience with a post that might turn viral that I wanna take away from this post. So I can give this link to you later in the chat if you would like to see it, but there are a couple of things that stand out to me about this particular type of content. Um, one is um, that it is very authentic. So this is a video clip from a live speech. Um, and if you take the time to watch this video clip, she is sharing something that is very vulnerable and personal. And so one of the ways that we can grow an audience is to show up as our unique and authentic selves, which draws people to us. Um, the other thing is that this is very, very relevant um, because uh, Carice is talking about topics that her audience, uh, which happens to consist of people who look like her, uh, are going to find this to be relevant. So the more relevant our content is to our audience, the more likely we are to have our content shared by others and reach more people along the way. Okay, so those are two case studies about growing an audience. I want to show you one more, um, and I'm actually going to use an example from my own Instagram. I mean, LinkedIn. Sorry about that. From my own LinkedIn. Um, if any of you are connected to me on LinkedIn, you might have seen this post because Instagram showed this post to people for three weeks. Uh, this is probably the, the LinkedIn post. I think I, I'm mixing up my channels. This is the LinkedIn post that I have posted that has reached the most people across the time I've been on LinkedIn, which is you know over a decade. Uh, what you'll see here is that this post had 57,000 impressions. You know, it has nearly 200 comments. 25 people chose to repost this content and over 900 people reacted to the content. And so there's a couple of lessons from this as well. Um, I, I think that one of the things about this particular content piece that I did is that it is authentic as well. This is not a post photo. It's not a professional photo. It's a one take photo. Um, also, the uh, the caption is something that I wrote myself that was very heartfelt, that was very authentic and vulnerable. Um, and again, I think it's relevant because this post speaks to a challenge that many people who are on LinkedIn face, which is, you know, how do you have your life and your work fit together? And so if you want to grow an audience, one of the ways that you can grow an audience is to have other people amplify your work. And in this case, you know, 25 people chose to share my content with others, which helps me to reach a wider audience. So as you think about what kind of content can I create and share that will expand awareness of my work in the world, the more relevant and authentic your work is, the more likely others are to amplify your work, which will help expand the audience. Okay, so um, a few ideas about ways that you can implement some of these concepts um, that, uh, that I'm saying about growing an audience. And thank you for that comment, uh, Susie, um, about that authentic heartfelt post. It is, it's like actually like real in the moment. I took my phone, I took one photo, and then I thought, huh, what if I put this out on LinkedIn? Um, so 
if you want to try some of these tactics of you know value through connection and content and consistency if you want to use an increased frequency to grow your audience or to figure out how to make your content more relevant and authentic so that you can grow a bigger audience there's two things that i want to encourage you to do um, one is to experiment so you know, if I look at any given LinkedIn post that I've done over the last few years, many of them have very little reach as it relates to impressions. If I shared my screen, I could show you that many of my posts only have about 100 impressions. And so one of the things to do is to experiment with what's the kind of content that I can create that will reach my audience in the most meaningful way. What I've seen uh, from my content and from clients' content is those personal photos make a big difference. Uh, so to shout out Aubrey again, and I did a post about her at her work anniversary that did include a photo of the two of us. And that post did perform about 10 times better than most of my posts. The, those personal photos um, that are kind of relationship driven uh, will always uh, outplay you know, just regular content that you're posting. Um, the second lesson that I that I have for you, and I'm going to go back to that LinkedIn post again, just to show you uh, when I put this post out, my colleague Allison, who's a social strategist on our team said, Becky, you have to respond to every single comment <laughs> to increase the reach of the post. Now, uh, when she said that to me, I kind of groaned because that is time consuming. However, if if we believe that audience is about people and that connection is more important than content, then actually any person here who took the time to comment on my post, you know, I can honor them and value them and show them that I'm a real life person by engaging with the comments that they make. And so I did take Allison's advice to answer every single comment that came in on this post. And as a result, I saw LinkedIn continue to put it in front of people across three weeks. So the two ways that I want to encourage you as you think about growing the biggest possible audience for your work over time is to experiment and to engage. All right, so uh, reach is uh, expanding audience plus lasting impact. So let's talk uh, for a few minutes about lasting impact. Um, so um, expanding audience is about uh, growing the number of people that you're content reaches and lasting impact is often about focusing your energy and attention on a smaller uh, audience because it's those people who are closest to us that we will have the most impact with over time. So I do have a, a few fun slides on the topic of impact. If you just give me a minute, I need to get back to them and we can take a look at those together. All right, so I want to tell you a story about lasting impact and the story about lasting impact, uh, you know, I could tell you any any number of stories, but because this uh, photo of the baby resonated with everyone so much, I wanted to sh kind of share the backstory uh, on this baby that I'm holding in my office. It is not my baby. If you if you did not read the post or you're not aware, this is my colleague uh, Beth Porter. It's her baby. Um, and so I want to tell a story about Beth Porter. So I first met Beth and her mother um, back in about like 2010 when I moved to Michigan. And uh, my kids attended the same school as Beth's mother's kids, Beth obviously being my friend's daughter. Uh, so this photo is a photo from 2012. And Beth was 13 years old. Is that right? She's sitting across the room for me. So Beth, Beth was 13 years old. Uh, my kids were various ages. I can't do the math right now. These are uh, my three children uh, with their friends in this photo. We were at a water park for the day. So back around 2012, Beth, who is now my executive assistant, began to spend time with my family and babysit my kids. So fast forward to 2022. Uh, here's Beth in this photo. This is the 10th anniversary of my company when we were gathered for a special celebration dinner. Um, now, I, I, I'm not going to tell you that I was a a part of Beth's life over that entire period. You know, I was aware of what she was up to. Um, I was aware when she had her first baby, I was aware that she was looking for more flexible work that would help her to be the mom that she wanted to be, but I wasn't really deeply involved in her life. Um, and then last summer when we decided that we wanted to hire uh, a new executive assistant and have someone in the office to work with me, I ended up hiring Beth. A, a month or two later, I found out she was pregnant with her second baby. And after the baby,
baby was born, we made a decision as an organization to be flexible and allow for an experiment for Beth to bring her baby to work. And so I, I want to kind of share this story because I think lasting impact is in a way kind of contradictory to the thoughts that we have about bigger audience. You know, lasting impact is something that requires that fourth commitment of longevity, of choosing to stay in online spaces and to stay in relationships long enough to become memorable and to make a meaningful difference. And again, back to what I said earlier about how choice precedes commitment, I realized you know, when I hired Beth a year ago, that it was a very specific and intentional choice. And so I think anyone who wants to make lasting impact in the world does so from a place of choosing. Um, you know, even Aubrey on the call, like choosing to continue to stay in relationship, continuing to work together, will increase the chances that will have a lasting impact on someone's life. So I do have a couple of more pictures because I just love thinking about this. So the, here are three more stories about lasting impact. So this photo in the center is my friend, Jamie Mahiran smith And I met Jamie as a high school sophomore. And again, like the story of Beth, you know, we didn't stay in relationship all the time since I was a high school sophomore back in 1987. Um, but a few years ago, I think in about 2018, uh, we resumed our friendship and now we text each other every day. Now, it, like, can you imagine in any world more impact than that moment to moment, every single day connection? So closeness is what creates impact. Um, a couple of other stories. The photo on the left is my friend, Phil Gerbishak. Uh, Phil is a great online uh, guy. He's He has built his audience and shares a lot of valuable content with the world. We're not close, but I've known Phil in online spaces since 2009, and he has chosen again and again and again to support my work. So I wanted to share this photo. It's from 2011 uh, when we had the chance uh, to go out for breakfast with our partners and each other um, and meet in person and spend time together. So longevity is critical for a lasting impact. Uh, again, another lasting impact story on the right. I don't know if anyone recognizes the woman in the photo with me on the right. Her name is Jane Anderson. And Jane is someone who has chosen to make a commitment to me to be a champion uh, by participating in many of my company's book launches, by sending me personal notes of encouragement, over the years. Um, and then this photo is from a month or so ago when she came in person to an event that I was at. Um, again, a year ago when my book came out, she came in person all the way, several hours away to be at my party. So um, a few things that I wanna leave you with about lasting impact. So impact comes through memorable, meaningful relationships over time. And so impact is something that starts with a choice and ends with a commitment. Uh, we're going to have the biggest impact with the people that we choose to interact with most frequently and closely. All right, so uh, those are just a few things that I wanted to share with you today about creating reach, which is ongoing, uh, wait, grow it, Bill. I can't even say my own definition, reach <laughs> equals uh, growing audience plus lasting impact. Uh, thank you for all the encouraging notes in the in the chat. Um, and like, I know that the the photos that I showed you about the, the lasting impact stories, there are kind of two sides to those, right? So there are the relationships that start online that you choose to take offline. And then there's the relationships uh, that start offline that you choose to bring online. And so of the three photos I showed you, my relationship with Phil Gerbishak, who's been a good friend and supporter to me over the years, started online. My relationship with Jane Anderson started online. Obviously in 1987, there was no online. Uh, so my relationship with my friend Jamie started offline. Um, but as we think about uh, growing an audience and lasting impact, you really need both. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys heard me reference the other Becky. There's a woman named Becky who's on the webinar with us today who I met through an online community called 540 Writers. And Becky, as a volunteer and nonprofit, uh, is doing amazing work in bringing um, writers together for encouragement and support. And so that was another relationship that began online that I've chosen to take offline. So uh, 
in terms of action items, I gave you two action items about growing impact. I mean, growing audience. One was experiment and engage. As it relates to lasting impact, the action item that I want to encourage you with, and this is a concept that comes straight from my book, is to take that extra step of taking your online relationships offline and you know, calling someone or having a Zoom call face-to-face -face with them. All right, so I want to let you know about a couple of possible action steps from today's call, and then we will open for questions if there are any, and potentially bring Aubrey back for some Q&A. Um, or if you want to use the hand raise function, I'm also willing to bring you over the webinar wall to ask me a question face to face. And that way we can demonstrate that whole value of taking online relationships offline. And I just have a quick question, Aubrey. I'm still looking for the slide that would have the new program on it, and I do not see it. Uh, do you know if we have that? Um, I will look for it. Uh, I think that we don't. So I'm going to just share my screen and take people to a web page. So my team and I have started something brand new, partly to celebrate the one year anniversary of my book and partly to bring people together in community. We are launching as of this month, Reach More Readers Mastermind Groups, which will consist of virtual coaching sessions with me and other members of my team. And what you're going to notice is that there are three tracks. Uh, track one is for anyone who is launching a book and it's going to come out more than six months from now. Track two is for anyone who has a book launching in the next six months. And track three is for anyone who already has a book out into the world, but needs uh, new ideas to expand and continue the momentum for their books. Um, so if this is a fit for you, I would love to have you join one of our upcoming mastermind groups. They start in May. So there's a few weeks still that you can sign up. Um, and if these aren't a fit, I would request or appreciate if you would be willing to share one of our groups with others. Um, and so that is the main uh, thing that we wanted to announce today. Um, of course, of course, you know, my book's been out for a year. Uh, you can see that it's behind me. Um, you know, maybe it's time to reread the book or uh, buy a book for a friend or buy a book for yourself if you don't have one already. And I think Aubrey will put in the chat the links to the mastermind group and uh, the link to buy my book. Okay, and now it's time for q and I don't know, Aubrey, would you like to come back? And if we see any questions in the chat or we see a hand raise, we can um, go ahead and take people's questions. Yeah, I haven't seen any come through yet, but I would love if people could drop some questions in the chat or like Becky said, if you guys want to come on this side with us, we'd love to have you. Yeah, I was kind of thinking Jane being like such a supportive fan, I kind of thought she might be here when I shouted her out. So we're going to have to make sure that Jane and Phil and Jamie know that we talked about them on today's webinar. Um, For sure. Aw, thank you, the other Becky. I appreciate that support. Uh, how much of the growth of my company is in the book? Jim, that's a really interesting question. And I haven't read the book in about a year. More yeah. than a year, actually. The last time I read my book was when I read aloud and narrated the book for the audiobook. I think I only share a few glimpses of the growth of my company in the book. You know, I talk about the origins of my company. I talk a little bit about my transition of being a stay at home mom and then beginning the company. But I don't know that I talk about the growth of my company in the book. Um, I'd be happy to share a little bit of that now if, if it would be helpful. So I founded my company in 2012. Um, I was actually working a W-2 job for a leadership consultant. And so for the beginning of 2012 and uh, maybe the end of 2011, I did have some clients, uh, but June 1st, 2012 is the day that I mark as like the beginning of the company, even though we had been serving clients before, because that was my first time to be full-time with the company. Um, I started out with some contractors in 2012 and had a few team members because I right away knew that I couldn't deliver all the work that our clients needed. Um, we began hiring employees in 2015. Uh, before that, we all had, you know, W. Uh, 1099 contractors only. We got an office in 2015. Um, our team today is about 11 employees and about 11 
plus contract folks. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't know, Jim, what else you would want to know about the growth of the company. I will say that uh, releasing my own book last year did create a ton of momentum for us as an organization in terms of interest in people wanting to work with us. We are having one of our biggest years ever, um, especially in rebounding from the pandemic. Um, yeah, so I don't know, Jim, if that kind of answers your question. It's a little bit of the history. Um, yeah, thank you, Jim, for watching us grow, being a part of the launch teams. I would say that the growth has not been without growing pains. Um, I just had a meeting this morning, like a quarterly review meeting with my leadership team of, hey, what went well in Q1? What do we need to adapt for Q2 and beyond? And, you know, as an as a person, I am always like stretched by leading this company. And I never actually, Jim, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I never set out to grow a company. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't take a business class in college. I didn't take a marketing class in college. Um, you know, none of the tools that we use in our company now existed when I was a college student back in the early 90s and the late 80s. I started college in the fall of 1989. You know, none of this worked. So none of it existed. Uh, so I'm a very unlikely entrepreneur, but it's been uh, like an amazing journey. Becky, what's interesting to me, I feel like you didn't share this part, but your like vision for the company in terms of like, we're talking about impact and how you're impacting people's lives. I think part of your company, like that is you doing that. And so, you know, creating those opportunities for others. And I think that's a cool story too, about like what you know, how you started your company, why, and what you were hoping to provide for others. Yes. Thank you. That's, that's true. So for those of you who don't know, um, I, you probably do know one of the reasons why we scheduled this webinar is that next week, the 19th of April is the one year date since I released the book. And there's a few fun things that we're doing, you know, launching the mastermind groups is one of them, but we also like have this cool opportunity next week where my book will be in New York city at the fifth Avenue Barnes and Noble store. So I don't know if we have anybody from New York city on the call today, but if, if you're watching and you're in New York, please go take a picture of my book in the window of the Barnes and Noble store in New York City. That's just one of the fun opportunities for celebrating the anniversary of the book's release. All right, so we're looking for brave people who want to be on camera with us, um, if you would like. Uh, a couple of other things. Some of you may, may be a part of our ongoing webinars. I want to make sure that you know that we have two exciting webinar events coming up in the next uh, little bit. Um, Susan Fowler, who's a long-term client of our company, has her new book, Why Motivating People Doesn't Work and What Does. And we have a webinar with her coming up with Gary Ridge, who was the former CEO of WD-40 as her special guest. And we also have a very exciting webinar coming up with Bob TD um, and his co-author on a new book called Leading with Questions. And so Aubrey is going to put in the chat a link to those upcoming webinar events that we're really anticipating. Um, and those are coming up in the next few weeks. We would love to have you join us. All right. Well, thank you so much, Aubrey, for being with me today for our anniversary celebration event for REACH. And uh, thanks to all of you who have chosen to be with us today. We're going to wrap up for now. And I wish you well. And I can't wait for the next chance we have to connect. <laughs>